and it will also be expected uh, that Kenneth Foyata will talk about uh, the Ghana Cares at Tampa program, how our books are looking like in terms of growth, effects of interest payments, our debt, and like I said earlier, the Ghana Cares of Tampa program, and the journey so far, job creation, among others. My name is Amsel. We're doing this with Alfredo Kansi. will be joining me shortly, and we'll be looking at what the numbers look like. Between now and after the budget is read, we'll give you a cut as well. But very, very key, uh, among other issues, will be uh, for traders and stakeholders, prices of goods on the market. Shortly, we'll show you a story that is telling us what the prices are. But we'll also be in Parliament to gauge the mood because we have a team there covering proceedings. So first, let's take a look at what it looks like with prices of goods on the markets. We did the story last week. Our checks for most traders show general price increase of the local commodities on the market. A rainfall, it takes weeks to also get the little supply at an increased price for middlemen. In effect, the price of a ball of kinky, for instance, has also shot up. The increase has affected our pricing as well. A ball of kinky is now two cities, has reduced in size. That's a say, no. Me born with two CD, any one five. Obviously, with the prices of maize shooting up, to what some traders attribute to shortage because of the poor rain pattern, it has trickled down to the ball of kinky you and I consume. And for the other local commodities, prices have also seen some increase. For these traders, it is worrying because they tend to push it back to the consumer who bears the brunt. Nana Ikria Mensa Brampa, TV3, Malamata Market. And reduction in port charges and general goods are some key expectations of some of them. How bono? And then you're not on to so. Said a bay, a bogasino, a coin your mass, and you money back for a new matrono. Yes, over back from Amaya Manipani Batadiana. We want a reduction in port charges so that we can sell more. When the port duties go high, it affects our goods. Finance Minister is expected in Parliament on Thursday to present the media budget review in accordance with the 1992 Constitution. Welcome back. It's a special coverage of the media budget review here on TV3. We're also live on 3FM 92.7 and we're also streaming live on 3news.com. And this morning we're looking at what's uh, the contained in the 2021 budget in March. My colleague Alfred Ocasio will be doing those analysis shortly. In the meantime, I've been joining us shortly, so we want to start with him so that he can make his way to Parliament. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks. In the media budget review. We've also been joined via Zoom by Honorable Mona Korte, who is a former Deputy Finance Minister, as well as CEO of the Ghana Association of Bankers, Mr. Johnny. We'll be speaking to them shortly. But Alfred, the numbers. Yes, the numbers. And uh, to, um, the International Monetary Fund, economists, watchers, and the likes of Monacota and, uh, and others. And indeed, the Finance Committee itself in Parliament have raised concerns about the rather distressing uh, levels of our debts as we have it. And the latest debt figures clearly reflect those concerns that you know the economies have raised and the fact that it appears that the two components in our, what we use the loans for mm -hmm. is of serious concern that we're borrowing to pay salaries we're borrowing to service existing debts and that that particular path is unsustainable mm. and that is what is a concern of many economies and look at this mm. as at may 2021 i'm going to show you on your screens mm -hmm. right now the total debt as communicated to us by the Bank of Ghana is 332.4 billion Ghana cities. 
332.4 billion Ghana cities. That's how much all of us owe. Mm. And this is not specific to this particular administration. This is an add-on. Mm. But it's anticipation. The, uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. It's anticipation. And, and know the, the external debt component, yes. Mm. The external debt component, 161.5 billion. Okay. Mm. Mm. And the domestic debt component, uh, there was actually an increase of a little over 20 billion. Exactly. As compared to the same period just about some three months ago. So you see this, that the concern there of how much we are borrowing internally, we see the 170.8 billion Ghana cities, okay, is what has also raised that concern. If you do the analysis and comparative analysis of what we ended the year 2020 with, and I'm going to show you mm. what the end of year 2020 looks like. Lo looks like. Okay. This is mm. as of May 2021, what you're seeing on your screen. But let's go to the end of year 2020. So mm. we appreciate where we came from mm -hmm. and where we are now. Exactly. As at the end of 2020, we ended with 256 billion Ghana cities. That was our total debt stock. Now we are talking about 332.4 billion, right? Mm -hmm. The external component then was about 135.2 billion. If you look at the internal, there's a domestic component. Now we're talking about 170 billion, right? Mm -hmm. As at the end of the year, 2020, it was 120.8 billion. Mm -hmm. Simple analysis, mm -hmm. 50 billion. Mm -hmm added on to it. Mm. Now, let's go on to how the situation looks like in terms of the analysis of both the domestic and who we owe and how much you see. Anytime we put out these figures, mm -hmm. people wonder mm -hmm. exactly who we owe. And how did we get here? How did we get here? <laughs> that, that, that famous question. The euro bonds account for had over 47.3 billion mm. as at the end of year 2020. And the source of this data is the Ministry of Finance annual public debt report what you see on your screens there mm. the euro bond accounts for 47.3 billion mm. that is who do we owe and how much mm. next is the world bank and the imf 30 billion mm. and already be, be, uh, from january the world bank has been uh, extending some loans to us because of the COVID support mm -hmm. That we haven't added as yet. Mm -hmm. This is us at end of 2020. The United States, we owe them 13.9 billion. Mm -hmm. China, 9.6 billion as at the end of 2020. ECOWAS, that's the African Development Bank, 7.2 billion. France, 3.2 billion. The UK, 3.1 billion. Germany, India, Netherlands, Brazil, Australia. It follows like that. In fact, there are some other countries are not listed in here that we owe. If that's the list. Israel, 916.7 million. We actually even owe the Denmark, Nordic countries, guess what, South Africa, mm. 381 m million. We owe them. European Union, Belgium. These are powered, powered up debts. Absolutely. Over the over, years. Over the years. Mm. Okay. These are the countries and the institutions mm. that we owe. You want to now find out then how all of this compounded because you talked about the revenue. I just exactly. wanted to point it out quickly. Mm -hmm. And then, then you, no, you we'll, just we'll, round up we'll to we'll with, with, to, uh, with Because and, and then the in the 2021 budget, mm -hmm. according to what we, we were communicated to by the finance minister in the first quarter of this year during the 2021 budget presentation, government intends to rake in some 72.4 billion mm -hmm. Ghana cities mm -hmm. from internal sources. 72.4 billion. Out of that, 70 billion, mm -hmm. in fact, is expected from this internal channels of revenue generation. So the total revenue target for this year mm -hmm. in the 2021 budget is a little over 72 billion. And 70 billion out of that is going to be generated internally. Mm -hmm. So one of the expectations is for the finance minister to tell us how these taxes that mm. were introduced mm. and the existing ones that were increased, how much has it brought in since it took effect on May 1? Mm. You remember it took effect on May 1? Exactly. The NHIS VAT flat rate by, up by 1%, the new sanitation and pollution levy, the fuel prices that went up in the cumulative effect. And you know that in this country, when fuel prices go up, it affects the price of almost everything on the market. The import duties that have also gone up, mm -hmm. you had the uh, importers and exporters making that complaint. They are in the market, and the small and medium scale enterprises 
which the Honorable Member of Parliament was once a Maslock CEO. So he <laughs> understands he knows. the dynamics of the SME sector, <laughs> mm -hmm. which forms well over 80% of our economy. Mm -hmm. And the, and the financial know. sector clean up levy as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. 5%. So you see, mm. they are experiencing the impact of the increased taxes mm -hmm. and the import duties that have gone up. Mm. But yet, they cannot increase the price of goods and services. You know why? Mm. Because the, the, the spending income of the people the consumers are also either static or reducing. It's, almost, the, it's, it's almost non-existent. Absolutely. Because of the impact of COVID, <laughs> COVID. it's mm -hmm. either people have been laid off, people are taking one third of their salary, mm -hmm. others are taking half of their salary, so they don't have money mm -hmm. to spend. Mm -hmm. And so the, the businessman, the businesswoman cannot pass on these increases they are experiencing mm -hmm. onto the consumer as is expected. Because if you increase your prices, Nobody's going to buy your, your, your product. Mm. They will look for the alternative to buy. That's what they are confronted with. Non-oil revenue sources are from about 90% of our revenue. And we are not doing well in that regard. Precisely. We cannot depend so much on the 10% oil revenue sources. And, and, and thank you very much, Alfred Nukansi, for, for, for that analysis. And Dr. Stephen Amwa, I know you have a lot of reactions, but let me pick the thoughts of uh, Honorable Mona Kote, former uh, Deputy Finance Minister. Uh, good morning once again. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> nice to be on your program. Sorry, we had to have you hold for a while. That's fine. <clears throat> okay, so your initial comments, we're getting ready to listen to what's contained in the media uh, budget statement. Thank you very much. I think that Alfred Okanse has done a great analysis of the situation. So people know what... Oh, we lost her. Uh, hopefully we, we, we get her back soon oh, but doc all right so doc let, let me come to you so your initial reactions to what we are doing in terms of closing the financing gap we use majority of what we earn in paying interest on loans what we call uh interest and amortization We pay these debts by themselves. We actually at a time like this when we are. Oh, hopefully we get we get her back. We get her back uh, to make that 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 statement. I mm. think I would want to get to uh, Dr. Stephen Amwa. Um, I think this discussion needs mm -hmm. about two hours. <laughs> I'm being honest with you, because um, it's a situation that has engulfed this country or characterized us for so many years because. We are not being productive enough. Let's be very honest. And the situation we find ourselves in mm. is as a result of the fact that naturally the mm. percent. So maybe my sister should check again. But even what we find ourselves in today shows prudent management of the recent or the present government is it ha, of course madam if productivity also why are we not talking about condition situations that led to these things yeah i, I mean i'm sure mm -hmm. if you are not going to work if your husband is not working for a long time because of natural disaster and probably he's not getting money from anywhere and you have to eat what happens even the money that he is able to get from somewhere may not necessarily go into productive areas because a lot of things on our market we're actually going on sluggishly. Let's do this analytically in the context that will be fair to the situation. Two, our problem, which I agree with you and my sister who spoke, is that as a country, we have not been able to ensure that our product, because we have created this situation, we are always, look, between 201 and 20, not that I'm doing political analysis here, but mm -hmm. I'm just giving you the figures. And between 208 and 2016, mm -hmm. Our debt portfolio was increased mm. by about 1,140% mm. from mm. 9.2 to about 120 billion. Mm. So it okay. has been I see. our problems mm. as a country. Mm. It has been our problem that we right. always make sure that we have enough obligation to perform the area of interest because we are almost destroying our productivity market. Basically, it's less than one. There's a major problem. They are the defensive type. So when the economy moves 10%, they don't go. They go slowly. Mm -hmm. That is why government, NDC and PP together, when they are in power, they should be able to understand our market type and develop proper plan on how to utilize this 
precious resource we are able to recover. My third concern is food security. Last year and this year, we've seen a lot of importation of basic food, like onions and tomatoes. I am really looking forward to a plan that will ensure food security, that we can grow, we can store and keep for lean season. At this point in time, those are the basic things that government must make sure they have in place so that Ghanaians can feel comfortable during this pandemic time. Mm. With the third wave coming, there's no doubt that our healthy eight or so hospitals, we haven't seen them come up. Most of the hospitals that have intensive care are still in the urban areas. What is happening to our rural folk? So please should speak to some of the programs that were put in place and how well those programs have impacted um, our people. Mm. I, I would just have you comment on the tax exemption bill currently in Parliament. I mean, tax exemptions cost us over 2% of our GDP. Just a brief comment on that. You know, at the end of the day, because we do not have capital, and we need invested, to invest in this country and build our infrastructure for us. There are certain projects that necessarily require tax exemptions. Therefore, if you are giving tax exemptions to get like refineries, those are projects that will help us to recover from our, our negative growth rate. So those we need and we must get them. What we need to do in order to show up our revenue is to make sure that we broaden our tax net. We said this over and over, and it sounds like a rhetoric now. But the idea is that now we have a new world. We have a world where you have a lot of investment in logistics, um, in catering, in, in, in areas that support working from home, or support staying at home and still being economically viable. Those areas are the areas we need to start looking at, bringing them into the tax net. Um, not trying to still get the informal who we don't really have a handle on, but the new areas. I mean, we see a lot of new business today, and even the media. I mean, the media houses have made a lot of money during this pandemic time, and that is because everybody's watching TV, everyone is at home, everyone is listening to radio. So those are all the new areas that perhaps we can generate some revenue from. Mm -hmm. And I see that government is making sure that they cut on capital expenditure rather than recurrent expenditure. Mm. I mean, when you cut on capital expenditure, then you are curtailing your future growth, and that is worrying to all of us. Mm. The kind of expenditure we make at this time is important, and we must make some capital expenditure so that the economy can do well. I'm sure we'll link up after the budget is read so we get uh, your reactions to that as well. But we are grateful that you made time to speak with us. We're just about wrapping up so we can make way for the midday news. But Honorable Monocote is worried about revenue generation methods, youth unemployment. She wants us to look at food security and the youth, uh, employment for the jobs for the youth. Briefly, I um, mean, before we go, we are just wrapping up. Uh, okay, because mm. there's no time. But the things she raised mm. are things that. They are common issues everybody will raise. Except that this area, we should all be careful. Mm -hmm. She's not the only person, even MPP guys, you hear that. Broadening our tax net, broadening our tax net. This has been the problems we have. These have been problems in Africa and mm -hmm. in Ghana. Have we sat down to conduct any statistical or scientific analysis for us to know that the areas we have not covered will give us $1 billion? The work we have, this can solve maybe 20%. Before I was born, we're talking about our tax net. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we have the rhetorics, we have the chorusos, we speak, we write them. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to properly putting work into it and getting something scientific and, and statistical or statistic or whatever mm -hmm. to show practically impact us, we don't. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure of that. You understand what I'm saying? And this is not time, only she or this UMP, but, but the entire country, everybody in your tax net. Mm -hmm. We have to also look at the leakages. Mm -hmm. It's very serious. Mm -hmm. The way people are the stealing, is, right. whether and the NDC or MPP, mm -hmm. even the oil they transport mm -hmm. internally, right. even the, the commodities, mm -hmm. they pretend and put them in, in, in barrels, uh, barrels. Burkina Faso cars. Mm -hmm. And they get to places and they, they, they 
offload them. There are serious issues as a country. They know those who are stealing. You, you are in government. We, we expect that you resolve all no, no. that that challenges and more. Well, let me I, tell I, you, I, can I, you resolve I, all the problems in TV3? Dr. Sevenama is a member of the so, Finance Committee this in is Parliament. Is the and I'm it's really, a country issue. I'm really certain with that. Issue. Mm. But, but we are grateful that you said that we won't be expecting any new taxes and oh, then maybe so. we'll be cutting yeah. down on, on some of the taxes that we introduced in March because, because, because we haven't I seen, we haven't seen the no, impact. We in already enough. missed the first quarter revenue Madam, target. Are you talking <laughs> about cutting the taxes and not also borrowing? So how do you, how do you finance or fund the project? You are in government. You know the other issue is... You are in government.